That's yeah. so honest. It's actually not true, but it's very genuine. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. if you see what I mean. And the person's being honest, and probably that applies to most people. But I will say this, that when you really get to a certain point, you do know. And that really is perhaps an aspect of enlightenment, that you've moved beyond feeling something even, psychically experiencing something even, mentally and logically concluding something even, to the point where you actually know it. At that moment, you know it. Mm. And, and so it is possible uh, to do. The Spiritual Freedom Show with Richard Lawrence, where politics is not the answer, materialism counts for nothing, and spirituality will set you free. All right, hi Richard. Hey Darren. So I picked up the thread the other day, um, which jumped out at me because I think it points to the extent to which so many words have become kind of devoid of common meaning. Mm. And um, also I think, <laughs> I think you probably have a unique position to come on this okay. anyway. So let's see what you think about this. So it's about enlightenment, basically. Yeah. And this person says this, so people seem to have no real understanding of what it means when they talk about being enlightened or even awakened. And enlightenment isn't even the end, it's the beginning of the journey, and yet people either confuse it with the end or don't bother to start because they think just saying all the right words is the same thing as actually realizing your oneness with all things. Yes. I thought, you know, it is true that, you know, a lot of people talk about enlightenment, but what do they really mean by that? And, and do, they, do they get to the heart of what it really meant in the, in the traditional... Yeah. I would say very often not. Mm. I mean, in, in, in this part of the world, we have a so-called Age of Enlightenment, which is the 18th century, oh, as yeah. we're okay. taught. As a, as a, you know, just, just using a with. word, yeah, yeah, and it's got with. really nothing to do with... I mean, it, it, was, it was an intellectual right. culture. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not saying all intellectual culture is wrong, yeah. but it's not true Enlightenment. Mm. And, you know, then you have different concepts of it and different degrees of it. I mean, this is where we are very, very, very lucky because we yeah. have enlightenment absolutely defined for us. Mm. Not only is it defined for us, we're told exactly how to get it. Yeah. And what it is, and I'm quoting from this book now, The Nine Freedoms, writing from the transmission, it's the transmuted... I've got to get this right from memory. <laughs> the transmutation of mental energies upon the plane of inspiration called high intuition. I think that's word for word. Mm. The transmutation of mental energies on the plane of inspiration called high intuition. And the key word for me in this, which is revolutionary, is the word transmutation. Right. Because in the past, if you go back to old ideas of enlightenment, um, and there were always degrees of it, by the way. There are degrees right. of right. samadhi. Right. I mean, we talk about samadhi, and the way Dr. King defines samadhi, I think, is as high and as advanced as you're ever going to find anywhere, mm. because he was a very advanced, um, even before he was contacted by beings from other worlds, which is why he could be used by beings from right. other worlds. Yeah. Um, but samadhi breaks down into many categories. But in the old days, it was a, a process of detachment. Mm. Now, detachment is still very useful. It's absolutely necessary. It's something we're going to need at times to use, but it isn't the sole, it isn't sufficient. Mm. And so what we have is this concept of transmuting mental energies. This is the final stage, by the way. There, there are the whole freedom, the fourth freedom, goes through stages, the physical stage, the mental stage, the psychic stage, absolutely crucial, the psychic stage. Some yogi teachers wouldn't like that, yeah. but it's definitely essential in one way or another, not like necessarily like I've done it, don't have to sort of become a psychic consultant, right. but the psychic stage is essential. But then comes this transmutation upon the, uh, of mental energies upon the plane of inspiration called high intuition. And I, I, you know, that's something one could pore over, P-O-R-E, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at yeah. length. Yeah. Well, what would you say? I mean, there are a lot of people who, who claim to be enlightened. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there are people, I, look, there's somebody who's very, very successful, yeah. very well known. Um, I met him once. Uh, he seems a very nice person. Uh, certainly a person who's found a level of peace, obviously not enlightened. Mm. In the, and, and even his description of enlightenment shows that he's not enlightened. But just to one thing, he's missed out completely, he hasn't experienced yet the psychic stage in any I way. I see. Far so that's as kind I of know. like a key into the it's, it's an essential stage mm. in one way or another. Mm. You, you, you don't, it's not a goal 
per se. Uh, it's only useful as, in as far as how you can help others through it. But it's something you do need to go through. You need to awaken your... It will happen. As Kundalini rises, it's going to happen. Right. If it hasn't happened, then you haven't risen Kundalini to the sufficient level uh, to then move on beyond yeah. it and become enlightened. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's interesting you mentioned it because there's, there's, a, a, there's a point in the discussion here where someone said, um, they said, I'm convinced there's absolutely no way for us to know if we're enlightened or not. Um, we can pursue enlightenment, we can feel as though we're making progress, but I don't really understand how someone can know that they are if they've never, you know, how... So That's so honest. Uh, yeah. That's so honest. It's actually not true, but it's, it's very genuine, <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. if you see what I mean. And the person's being honest, and probably that applies to most people, but I will say this, that when you really get to a certain point, you do know. Mm. You, 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 and that really is perhaps an aspect of enlightenment, that you've moved beyond feeling something even, psychically experiencing something even, mentally and logically concluding something even, to the point where you actually know it. At that moment, you know it. Mm. And, and so it is possible uh, to do. Uh, but, you know, it's much, much better, though, and it's going to be the result of effort. It's not going to just happen, right. and it's not something you can learn on a weekend. Um, a weekend course, if it's a good one, such as the ones yeah. in King Yoga, for example, realize yeah. you're in a potential, very valuable to you, but you will have to use them and apply them for many years, I would say, because it's, uh, especially in this day and age, but there is a stage you can get to, and in that moment, you can actually know. I've experienced it myself, but very recently. Mm. So, and I've been doing this since I was 18, uh, every day, to some degree. I've made mistakes, of course, but I've followed this path avidly, um, and it's been my number one priority. Um, and so it's taken me that long, you know. Um, so, and, and, you know, whether it happens in this life or another, another life, is, it depends on the individual. And by the way, I, I've got a lot, I completely agree with this person that there are mm. stages of enlightenment. And, you know, I'm, I'm a novice yeah. in terms of uh, really advanced people. I'm not claiming to be an adept or mm -hmm. a master, but I do know that. You can get to a stage where you say, right, I now know. And, the, and of course, what you want to know is God. Yeah. Or Brahma, yeah. or the Absolute. That's what you know, and you know. The big thing is, you know, I am divine. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up today is because I'm sitting across the table from someone who's actually experienced a degree of that, which you know almost brings tears to my eyes because it's like that's like, <laughs> well, know, it's like it's the whole thing. And I just, I think it'd be wonderful if you just talk for a moment about you know what this experience is like. Because this person's saying, you know, you know, can we really know? And the truth of it is that you can, and maybe just an insight into what that was like. Well, I'll, I'll tell you yeah. one thing, is that when I first got involved in all this sort of thing, I was very, very, I mean, my route in was through yoga practice, mm. and mainly, uh, you might say, psychic and mental forms of yoga, rather than the physical Hatha yoga. And so I was like a devotee also at the beginning of Yogananda, who I regard, rightly or wrongly, as a very good friend. <laughs> I'm going to say that, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not comparing myself to him for mm -hmm. one second. Sure, sure. But, um, you know, and also very much Vivekananda, who I deeply respect and admire, and others. And then I found Dr. King, and I, that was it for me. Right. He was a true yogi, but a yogi who was giving service. Right. Um, but... I asked Dr. King, and I, I probably said this before, I've certainly said it to you before, and we may have said it on the show, in which case, please forgive me if you've heard this before. But I had this idea in my head, together with a good friend of mine at the time called Alan Mosley, the late Alan Mosley, who later became a bishop in the Aetherist churches, as I did. And we both had this idea we could become an adept in one life. We were very inspired by somebody called Yogi Milarepa, oh, yeah. who set out to become enlightened in one life, and did. Uh, he did say, though, and this is quite unusual, because this is a thousand years ago in Tibet, uh, that he was doing it because that was the way he could help the world the most. Mm. So that's, quite a, that's a great motivation. Mm. But I thought, I'm going to try and do that, you know. And um, as I want to repeat, I've made many mistakes in the journey to doing sure, that, and sure. I'm still not an adept, or I'm not claiming to be an adept. But I wanted to ask Dr. King, so in 1986, I did ask him, and I didn't 
with Dr. King take advantage of him. I didn't, although I was becoming a very close friend, and in the end we became really close friends, as well as he, he was my master, um, we, I didn't sort of say, ask him everything I wanted to sure, know. It was know, more about what he wanted to talk about, not what I wanted to glean from him. But on this occasion, I didn't want to go around being deluded, thinking I could do this, and... And I couldn't in this mm. life. So mm. I asked him mm. straight, just about myself, mm. could I become an adept in this life? And, and I meant an ordinary earth terrestrial adept, and sure. he told me that I could. Now, in one way, that was a quite a foolish question, as a matter of fact, in what, you know, because if you ask a master a question like that, and they tell you you could do that, and then you don't do that. Yeah, I see the point. I think you've almost let that master down. Mm. I didn't realise that until quite recently, by mm. the way. Mm. So um, I thought, OK, so this is possible for me. That gave me great encouragement. But I thought something else uh, last year. Um, I, I, I figured that this would be, if I was able to get really get to some stage, and I, all I say is I've dipped my toe in the ocean of samadhi, no more than that. Mm, mm, mm. I, I, it would be really helpful to other people because I've been given really um, more initiations, you might say, by Dr. King. I'm um, certainly not the only one, but I, I was given more by him personally probably than anyone else mm. around mm. now. And if I can't get there as well or get somewhere of a certain stage of enlightenment, let's put it that way, it's not very encouraging for other people, I figured to myself. Mm. So my main motivation didn't become then for me. It's different from back in 1986. I thought, yeah. look, I've got to do this. I owe it to Dr. King, and I owe it to other people to do this. And that's why I set out really to try and do it. But I, it didn't just fall on me. I really went for it um, and did it rigorously. Yeah. And, you know, but I started to believe I could do it. That was a key as well. And that was a big stumbling block with see, me, even yeah. though I'd been told this. The belief. Yeah, yeah. think, oh, you know, this yeah. is a, you know, this is for others. This is, and I think that's very common, actually. I, I'm not going to be teen. This is, you know, so in the, some future life, you mm. know. Uh, you know, they, they, they think great things happened in thousands of years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, there no miracles now. happened now. And in the same way, they think, I'm going to really make it sometime in the distant future or after I die, if yeah. they're a Christian, yeah. or yeah. go to heaven then. And it's, heaven can happen now, mm. right now. Mm. You know, mm. Kundalini heaven, as, yes. as we call it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really went for it, believing I could do it, and then I reached that particular stage where, and in that moment, and I did know God. And so long-winded answer to your question, but yes, it is possible. That's the good news. That's, I think, the main reason it happened to me rather than just for my own personal benefit. Yeah, that's interesting. Because, it's interesting what you say as well about the belief point because you know, some people will either be deluded into believing that they're already there or they'll have a real appreciation for what this stage really is and they'll think, well, maybe, you know, that's for somebody else, not quite me. Yeah. And, and really, we, yeah, but it is possible. It's possible yeah. and it's doable yeah. and it's doable on this path. And that's the yeah. key thing I want to stress. You know, yeah. I followed, I didn't go off. See, I think in myself, speaking for myself, I had somewhere it talk, and we talked about uh, reincarnation on another show yeah. and subconscious things. And I think in my own subconscious, and it might be true of others, which is why I share it, there was this idea that unless you go off into retreat, unless you go off and do advanced kundalini yoga for eight hours a day for years, unless you do something different from this path of service, it can't happen to you. It mm. isn't going to happen. Mm. It can happen on this path through prayer, through service. Yeah. Those were the main things that I've certainly done. Yes, I've done breathing exercises. I've done the practices in realize your inner potential. Right. Those and the 12 blessings and, and especially service to others and taking the opportunities to serve others. I'm not setting myself up at all, just trying to encourage people that this path mm. can take you there, yeah. uh, all the way there. Uh, well, I haven't gone all the way there, but can sure. take you to the stage of knowing. Yeah, it's interesting because it's not just that 
services do service is something we do when we're enlightened, but service is the way through which we become enlightened. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can see it kind of philosophically yes. that you manipulate karma yes. so you deserve it. You can see it that way. <laughs> but it's also an actuality. While you're serving, you're doing that thing I mentioned earlier, you're transmuting mm. mental energies. You know, it's and at the moment there are massive strikes on uh, you know, in various services, I won't even name which ones, in Britain and other countries in yeah. Europe, and I believe yeah. elsewhere. And, okay, I'm not saying they're right or wrong. It's not of my business in one way. But what I would say is this. Those people who give services of any form to others for no reward, for no increased, for no particular wage factor, in fact, no wage factor, it's, it's that element of the service which is pure service to others for no personal gain whatsoever mm -hmm. that will manipulate your karma the most. Interesting, yeah. 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 And that will then bring a change or bring an internal change because at the moment that you're doing that, you've transmuted your motive. Mm. You can't have a selfish motive while you're doing that. You could have the motive, well, this is going to help my karma if you are a metaphysical person, yeah. but that won't keep you on the path. Yeah, that's not the right motive. I see. Yeah. Uh, in the end, though, it's just doing it. And that act of doing it, you know, you are what you do. They used to say you are what you think. <laughs> uh, you are what you feel. You are what you eat. Yeah, We've yeah, even yeah, had that, yeah, haven't yeah, you? Exactly. But in the end, you are what you do. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and I think um, one aspect, I mean, people think, oh, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, send out this energy now, prayer for other people. I'm going to give this healing to, to this person. And... But one aspect that people might not appreciate is that in that moment, as you're doing that, you are actually developing yourself, you're advancing yourself. Mm -hmm. um, not, not just literally in, this, in the fact of the service, but even more powerfully, like you're manipulating energies. I mean, mm -hmm. you're opening your chakras, you're, you're becoming a channel for energy you to are. flow through you. You are, and, you, and you're working at every level, which yes. differs from the Milarepa path a right. thousand years yeah. ago, which wasn't. He went off into retreat yeah. and he went off into a cave and he had tremendous guts. You know, I'm, quite, I'm very impressed mm. by what he did, yeah. but it wouldn't work now. Yeah. You've got to work on every level now including the physical level. That's the beauty of service. Mm. You know, I mean, if somebody who, say, comes into the place we're sitting now, which is a temple, mm. to in order to join in at something called Operation Prayer Power, for example, right. yes, they come here, and while they're here, they're performing fantastic service, whether they're praying, doing mantra, whatever role they're playing in it, they're, they're, they're sending transmuting energies, which will also transmute, as you say, their own energies as they do it. Raise yeah. the kundalini. If you visualize love going from your heart center right. in prayer, you're going to raise also the energies towards the heart center because that's where your focus is. Right. And you're, all, you're internally transmuting energies. But it isn't just that, though. This is my point. It's the bus journey they had to take to get here, a physical act, I the see. money they had to spend to buy um, their train ticket. Yeah. Some have come from long distances. We had somebody who came to Operation Prayer Power here, not very, this very recently, who came from Glasgow <laughs> to yeah. come here yeah. and involved all kinds of journeying uh, to get here and you know, financial cost for someone who doesn't have a lot of money. Mm. Um, I, I believe, I don't know much about mm. them, but that mm. respect, but let's say they didn't. Mm. This is all part of it. Yeah. This is all an essential part of that act of service that culminated in the transmuting energies. And then they're in the process or they're on the way to transmuting the mental energies upon the plane of inspiration called high intuition. Yeah, beautiful. There's, um, it, it does also make me wonder, you know, because some people, they're kind of confused like a spiritual awakening with what you know the the real stage of enlightenment oh very much so and i thought maybe yeah. just add a little bit of color to the difference well, between those two i mean know. let's really boil it down yeah. i mean people misuse all kinds of words people yeah. claim all sorts of things of which they aren't capable yeah. people claim samadhi who haven't entered samadhi mm. and by the way i don't mind i don't mind at all if people don't believe that i have uh, at all right, right, or even right. end, as i say dip my toe in the mm. ocean i'm not i that's fine it's up to them, and I, and I, you know, it's only a claim I'm making. I can't prove sure. it to them. So, but there's lots of false claims out there. Those false claims of mediumship, of illumination of varying kinds, 
contacting, you know, Mother Mary or the Virgin Mary or contacting Count St. Germain or whatever it might, or the Pleiades, right. which aren't true. All the, the, the people who are most damaged by those claims are the people who make them. Mm, interesting. Um, you know, yes, they can damage others in the wake. If they're a con man or con woman, of course, um, they know it's not true. But at the same time, they're obviously karmically damaging themselves terribly. Yeah. And also, it will affect their own minds. Yeah. And there's a lot of con men and con women who've developed mental health issues mm. as a result mm. of sort of... Because to be convincing at that, you have to kind of try and believe your own lies. And that's a yeah. very dangerous yeah. thing to be doing. But it, I think it's just setting the bar too low. I agree. I think that's You know, we, about, we've got yeah. this Michelangelo thing, you know, I've got to get it right now, but... Um, my biggest fear is that it's not that I aim too high and miss it, but that I aim too low and reach it. Mm. And, you know, I think it's that. Yeah. That's just a, a great point. And, you know, it's, you've got to know, and this is, again, the beauty of the nine freedoms. Right. Even if we get to enlightenment or to some degree to enlightenment, it's still only the fourth freedom. Yeah. yeah, we've got the yeah. fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth. Yeah, I it puts it all in the right context. Yes, yeah. Um, I thought I'd go here for a moment to a question that came in, I think, which is related somewhat to this, because um, you talked about the practices and realize you're in a potential. Yes. And this person wrote and said, would you mind asking Richard this question on the show? Uh, Dr. King gave us a set of breathing exercises. And in the first breathing, he recommends we use the affirmation, I am now purifying my mind and my body. It seems easy to know how to purify the body, like good breathing, excellent diet, fasting, detox, etc. But I'd like to know what is the process of purifying mind? What actually is mind? Mm -hmm. And so goes We've got another show with that question. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a big one. But uh, uh, what I would say is one thing I have discovered absolutely mm. is that the purification process is absolutely key, absolutely essential prior to entering anything approaching an enlightened state. Mm. you, you if Because if you don't purify you, and I'll, I'll come to the art yeah. question, but if you don't, then you're going to raise some of these unpurified energies in the process. That's the day. And, or, or, or these unpurified energies, if they're still there, will be blockages I see. to you raising energies higher. So it's absolutely key. Um, yes, this question has mentioned various things you can do there to purify yourself physically, mm. and they, you know, they might be really good. But mentally, it's, it's energy. We come back to spiritual energy or prana mm. or chi, visualization of white light. White, by the way, because it contains all the colors of the spectrum, so you draw to yourself the, the qualities you need. Mm. And, of course, then the affirmation that Dr. King added sort of um, determines the use of that energy. Mm. But it, it, it's that sort of, I would suggest everybody has a moment's purification mm. if they're really getting serious about beginning to raise Kundalini or really enter any states, because if you don't, it won't really work fully. And mm. the worst case scenario, you, you, you know, could go badly wrong, but mm. hopefully it won't. So when this person says, so when we say this- uh, By the way, I don't want to frighten people when I say that, because yeah. I, I that wouldn't actually happen to nearly everybody, mm. but it's, it is much better to purify yourself. So when this person says, pure, when we say in the affirmation, I'm now purifying my mind, there's that aspect of it. What is actually, what are we actually affirming? Well, there? mind in this case yeah. isn't the brain cells, right. the physical brain cells. It's the, um, I mean, mind is the, includes the etheric energies in the aura mm. as well. The whole being, we are mind at various different levels. Until we reach cosmic consciousness, which is beyond enlightenment, okay. we start to go beyond mind. It's, it's, yeah. I think it's interesting what you were saying about you know, how certain things um, can become blockages. Because, yeah, there could be very some scars in our aura and whatnot, an aspect of, mm -hmm. of mind, I'm assuming, which mm -hmm. would then block the, you know, the rays of Kundalini. Mm. Or um, you know, if there were certain things in our aura which... Um, you know, as you say, if you raise them before you had managed to purify those, they yeah. could also, that could also become an issue for you. Yeah. And, I, and I could see how yeah, affirming this would be essential, mm -hmm. an essential affirmation in this process. Indeed. Um, I thought I'd just finish with one more thought here, which is just coming back to someone who just weighed in on this discussion. And they said, 
Um, in my opinion, enlightenment is useless if you're not using your knowledge to help other people. Oh, yes. It, it doesn't matter if you understand deep mysteries of the universe if you're just a hermit. Your knowledge is wasted if you don't use it to make the world a better, a better place. This is such right. a good point. Yeah. And, you know, I must say, coming back to the, the experience that I had yeah. earlier this year, as soon as I'd had it, the, and I'm going to just say an impression I had, uh, was basically from a higher source, OK, you, you've had that, now you've got to use it. Yes. And yes. that's what this person is saying. It's there to use. That again, I think, is the absolute beauty of the nine freedoms. Mm. Because th and this is the difference between uh, the, the cosmic intelligences in here yeah. and some of the people, great yogas as they may have been, or even rishis as they may have been, um, who didn't know or didn't certainly teach that there's a stage after enlightenment right. or nirvana take it right. to the ultimate as they might call it right. cosmic and and now we know there is and and these masters let's say on saturn let's say on the sun they enter very advanced stages of galactic samadhi or whatever they might be described as which will be so far beyond our idea of samadhi that you couldn't yeah. put them in the same, yeah, the same sentence yeah. but they know though completely why they're doing it and they're not doing it just to bathe in galactic samadhi. They're doing it because they know that they'll then come out with a, the ability to use it yeah. in service, and they'll be more equipped yeah. to use it in service than they were before they went into it. Yeah. So this person is spot on. And as a balance, I would say I've come across people mm. who forget to go within. I see. And the master theorist once said, and uh, forgive me because these quotes, I haven't got them in front of me, sure, so it's sure. from memory, yeah. but, you know, go onwards, go upwards, go outwards, but never forget to go inwards. And some people I know have, did forget to go inwards or have forgotten to go inwards. So you need to do both because it will equip you to serve. And that's the beauty of it. It's not an either or. Mm. Service is more important of the two, but you won't be able to serve beyond a certain point without going within. Beautiful way to end. Thank you. Everybody's down here. Thanks for tuning into the show. Now, if you enjoyed that episode, don't forget to subscribe for more wisdom from the Nine Freedoms. If you'd like to find out more about the Nine Freedoms, about Mars Sector 6 by Dr. George King, go to our website, that's ethereus.org. Rich and I love hearing from you, receiving your comments, your questions, and your spiritual experiences, and talking about them on the show. So do write to us, share them with us at spiritualfreedom at richardlawrence.co.uk. Always remember that service is the jewel in the rock of attainment. See you next time.